Hey, what's going on? Let's take a look at some science fiction uh, fantasy pulp magazines from the 1940s and the 1950s. Uh, these magazines were very popular. They were sold at newsstands, cigar stores, uh, supermarkets, Five and dime stores. A dime store was like a, uh, golly, what was it? I mean, by comparison to today's standards, it would have been like a small Target or Walmart. I mean, a dime store, a mercantile. I don't know. Anyway, so they were called pulp magazines because the paper that they're made from, you'll notice, is the pulp-based newsprint, very low-grade paper. And they were very inexpensive to make. And, uh, I mean, really by the standard, they weren't really that cheap. I mean, look at this. This is from March of 1949. And uh, this is a very popular title, Amazing Stories. They even made a, a really, I think Steven Spielberg made a, a really good uh, TV show back in the 80s uh, called Amazing Stories that I think was based on this publication, uh, Ziff Davis publication. So as I was mentioning, they weren't necessarily cheap. This is a 25 cent cover price. Uh, comic books were uh, were a dime at this point. Uh, maybe this is the going price of a magazine. I, I'm not quite sure. I, it seems kind of pricey, doesn't it? Uh, so almost all of these magazines, I mean really all the ones I have, because I buy them for the most part based just on the cover, uh, have beautifully painted covers. And in reality, many of the stories within are actually based on the paintings themselves that were provided by certain artists that, uh, that the publishing companies used. So sometimes the stories, I mean, the, the, a piece of art would show up and they'd say, wow, that's going to be great. That'll make a perfect cover. Uh, let's give it, to, <laughs> give it to Leroy and uh, he'll write a story about it like Chemical Vampire. And the reason why I say Leroy is because it says here that Chemical, Chemical Vampire is written by Lee Francis, but in actuality, Lee Francis, I'm pretty sure, is Leroy Zerxa. And this is some of the cool stuff. You know, I love the lore. Uh, so anyway, there was a lot of interesting characters that wrote over and over again for many of these publications under odd, funny pen names. Uh, that's what Kilgore Trout is based on. Um, you know, if you've ever read any Kurt Vonnegut, Kilgore Trout is based on one of these guys. He might even really be, well, he can't possibly be based on Leroy Zerksa because he sadly died very young. So anyway, some of these guys were young and some of them wrote under many different pen names and uh, many different stories. And it's actually the reason why I picked this particular issue to start with and go through on top because it's one of my better condition issues and so it can actually survive a thumbing through. So we're going to take a look at and you'll see what the interior of these books are. Now mostly they are just all text with really beautifully illustrated title pages, right? Um, here's what we're, this is really the main reason we're here. So we're here for The Strange Tea of Ting Sun Fu by Leroy Zerxa. And when I looked up and found out about this guy, the main reason I looked him up was because of that name that looks like an anagram, right? Or something. It's an obvious pen name. It actually turns out that he used many pen names, but Leroy Zerxa is his God-given name. He was born Leroy Zerxa, and he died, sadly, very young, and there's not much information about him. But he and his young wife also wrote for many of these publications. So, The Strange Tea of Ting Sun Fu. Old Ting Sun Fu knew the secret of the passage to the fourth dimension, but you had to drink his tea to get there, and the taste was very bitter. Amazing stuff, isn't it? So each one of these is like a time capsule. You know, if you're into this old stuff like I am, you like these. 
So we're going to move, we're going to power through. The reason why I have many of these books is because they were really inexpensive because the condition that they are in, are in is very poor. So you'll find everything that we're going through and looking at in my collection cost no more than $5 a piece. Most of them are around $2 each. There's a Western that shouldn't even be in here. Um, so as I said, most of them are only around $2 a piece. Most of these I picked up online at mycomicshop.com. Low grade, 0 0.4 poor to 2.0 good, and uh, it doesn't hurt your pocketbook. Otherwise, if you try and get these things in good, con you know, in fine condition, you know, they're they're pricey. We're looking at stuff that's beat up and that was sitting in the barn, and I paid two dollars and twenty-five cents for it. I love this cover, even though it's really degraded and beat up. It's really worth a closer look for us. So there's a crew. And there's a wrecked ship. There is a planet with a burning sun. Or a planet scape with a burning sun that is just, I mean, right on them. And one of their comrades is down. Perhaps injured in the actual crash. Um, and the interesting thing about them and the reason why we're looking at them is that they have those uh, accordion joints on them. Just like uh, the Ajax Spaceman from the other day, and just like our friends, you know, Major Matt Mason, and Sergeant Storm, and uh, many of the aliens from the Outer Spacemen by Color Forms line, right? Beautiful piece, isn't it? So many of these covers, uh, not necessarily the ones that I have, uh, are painted by 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 artists which became famous, you know, within the, uh, within the genre. This is a beautiful cover, startling stories. Uh, as I mentioned, most of these are mid to late 40s and early 50s. There's probably nothing in here even older than like 1952 or 1954. I love this cover. Really cool, huh? I don't have a lot of uh, actual straight science fiction in this collection of pulps. I do have some other stuff that's pretty good that I'll show off in a later uh, video. Uh, they're ace doubles that have some great covers. Uh, vintage ace doubles from the from the 50s. And I'll, I'll make another video about those. I love this cover. Um... <laughs> All right, you know, just the, the, it's, what's so strange about it to me is it's like this oddly racist cover with, with this superimposed man in the background who looks like Broderick Crawford made up to look like a Chinese man or something. It's really creepy. Uh, but then you've got these girls dancing around. I mean, the one on the right looks like Betty Page. The one on the left looks like my crazy ex. And they're dancing around a fire. Isn't this awesome? I mean, how could you pass this by if you had a quarter? I mean, the, that quarter would be red hot. I'd have to get rid of it that quick. Because it would burn my hand because I needed to own this amazing stories. If I stumbled upon that when I was like 15. Uh, speaking of my crazy ex. So this, this, this cover right here, swear to God, looks like one of my ex-girlfriend's. And it's like a personal nightmare, right? Anyway, look at this great cover. Look at this amazing horse, man. I love the, the, the how the cover... Oh, man, look at this. Dynasty of the Devil by Alexander Blade. What a great name that guy came up with, huh? Wow, this is one of my favorites. So well, this is a little bit later, uh, 1954, um, Fantastic Story Magazine, and uh, yeah, so I mean you can kind of see where my artistic eye is attracted, the, you know, the female form, and then also, you know, fantastical images, um, and this is just multiple different levels of interest for me, 
Brewing publication. So let's talk about let's talk about the eye. All right. So early on, I believe it was discovered that uh, the human eye could sell things, especially print. Okay. Um, in particular, like certain um, sensational uh, horror horror based comic magazines of this exact same era would purposefully use images that illustrated impending damage to the eyeball in, I mean, captured in time right on the cover to try and get a kid to drop it one thin dime. And so, yeah, there's a lot of covers of uh, famous covers of comic books of hot pokers just about going into eyeballs and and such it's 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 really strange so this cover uh approaches that from an entirely different level it uses sex and the eye and it does it in such an amazing way man i mean this might be the, one of my favorite paintings of all time so cool right We're almost done, but we're getting to some more eyes. I love this cover, too. Sorry, buddy. This cover, man. Holy smoke. So, more fantastic adventures. Um, more whatever you want to call it. Like, uh, I don't know if, what the name of this is. Racism? Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, let's the the Asians were the bad guys a lot in a lot of these stories. Um, minions of the tiger, right? It's like Doctor Fu Manchu's hands right there, and he's got this awesome tiger ring. And then look in her eyes, in her hypnotized eyes. She has the tiger ring. Oh my god, so good, right? All right, we're almost done. We're just looking at a couple more, and these are really fantasy-based. Fantastic Adventures is a great cover of this uh, very Edgar Rice Burroughs-looking situation here. Queen of the Panther World. That's in good shape. July 1948. This is in good shape. Just open it up, and Wow. Guys. So yeah, these are awesome. And then the last one we're looking at right here is uh, this old, really beat up issue of Amazing Stories that's really cool. I still like it, even though we can't see that much of it. Uh, I don't know what that what it says, Girls of Venus, maybe. These, these bubbles. Yeah. All right. Well, that's quite long enough. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we just took a quick look at some classic science fiction fantasy pulp magazines. Excuse me. From the 40s and the 50s. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Stare into the tiger. Stare into the tiger.